we also have exciting news in five minutes that we can share too. Five minutes, five minutes. Yeah. So how about we use those five minutes just to explain exactly what Gusto is, because it's one of those companies, again, just like Cadre earlier when I interviewed Ryan, people aren't as familiar with it as a Marcus by Goldman Sachs or a SoFi or a Cabbage. Yeah, so thrilled to be here. Gusto, we define as a people platform, and we focus on small business. So today we serve over 60,000 companies, over 1% of employers in America with a payroll, HR, and benefits solution. Uh, we started about six years ago, and we're based in San Francisco and Denver, Colorado. Got it. And you have a few different uh, quirky things about your office and <laughs> company and culture as well. Like, I'm surprised you're wearing shoes right now. <laughs> so what Julie's referring to, if you ever want to come visit our office, is that we take our shoes off in the office. Uh, it's a unique tradition, one that is very specific to Gusto. We started the company uh, as three co-founders in a house that we were living in, and that was just uh, part of how we were raised. But it is, uh, to be clear, I wear shoes outside. Not a universal policy. <laughs> well, you have some other ones too. Like re I remember, whenever someone gets an offer from your company to work there, you have this weird tradition about like when you call them to give them the offer. Yeah, we think um, fundamentally every business, whether it's us or the customers we're serving, is about people and what they're able to do, what they're capable to do, and and the act of getting to offer is a really special, special moment. So whenever we make an offer to someone, uh, we treat it as a celebration. So literally, we'll have four or five people from the hiring panel. Uh, in a room, we'll start the call, I'll we'll start cheering, celebrating, and then go around the room and share you know, one or two anecdotes about why we're thrilled to give this person an invitation to join us. Um, and so we're happy to have that tradition. It kind of made sense to us early on. With 600 people now in the company, we've kept it. We hope to keep it for many years to come. Right, and I think it's important just in an era where there's been a lot written about poor company culture lately, too. So, you know, in the area of, era of all of this going on, have you changed anything internally in terms of, you know, making sure women are promoted or any other traditions that you guys do as well? Yeah, so we've tried to be very deliberate from the very beginning about um, how do we hire, what are the decisions we make on bringing someone into the team. Mm -hmm. So for us, hiring is about alignment. We want to find folks that share our values, you know, care about the mission, the motivation of what we're trying to do, and then have a relevant skill set to go do it. So the values and the philosophy piece, we've tried to stay uh, very focused on the whole way through, but obviously the way that manifests changes. You know, I used to interview every person that joined Gusto. Mm -hmm. um, that worked up to about 50, 60 people. That doesn't scale. So now we have a whole team of folks that screen against that. Uh, and then on the diversity topic, we've tried to be thoughtful on that. Uh, a couple years ago, we realized we weren't where we wanted to be in terms of um, engineering representation, especially with folks from a, a female background, and we were very public in highlighting that, wanting to make a shift. We've had some progress to date, um, but we still want to keep working on it. We're never done with that journey. Right, and so you guys started out just doing payroll, correct? Yeah, so there's... There's been evolutions in what you've added on there, and then by the time you get to the last part, maybe you can share exactly what the announcement is today. <laughs> yeah, so I think like any company, um, we kind of have a belief in what the future looks like. And when you're a startup in our space, there's companies like ADP, Paychex, very large, big, big companies that have been around for a long time. When we started the business, three people, you know, mostly from a technology background, uh, our inspiration was we had run payroll ourselves in our own prior small business. We had family running payroll in their small business. And we had the belief that the way it's done today is very broken, very painful, um, not just around payroll, but also around things like health insurance around things like adding an employee to your team, onboarding them. And so we um, started the business to really fix this problem. And it's a problem everyone feels. In America today, 40% of companies get fined for incorrectly doing their payroll taxes every year. And so for us, that was a call to action to go create a modern solution, bring technology into this segment, especially small business, an area that's been ignored for a long time. And so we created our master plan. And the way that we think about it is there's really phasing um, we can't snap our fingers and have everything live all at once. So phase one for us absolutely is building out that core payroll system. And we started doing that six years ago. We launched about five and a half years ago. And today we serve now over 1% of companies. We process tens of billions of dollars of payroll. We do all your tax filings, tax payments, local, state, federal. So that was kind of the important phase one because that's where all the data sits. And it's also the, you know, really the least optional part of running a business if you have a team. Um, I always say, if you don't pay someone, they're going to quit pretty fast. Mm -hmm. And so that's the core. Um, phase two for us was really building out uh, health insurance benefits, layering in all these different other components that um, are equally painful, frustrating, sitting in other silos, and we really believe should be in one integrated solution. 
And then phase three, which we're actually announcing and kind of sharing with the world for the first time today, um, is something that we've been working on really since the beginning, but are now able to share more publicly. We call it personal prosperity. And it's a bucket of features and functionality very focused on the employee experience. And so specifically what we're launching is something we call flexible pay, which we really think of as the future of how payroll should be if you're an employee. So we were talking about this earlier, but you, know, you get paid every two weeks today. Most folks are paid every two weeks. Um, unfortunately, that creates a lot of downstream effects from a cash flow standpoint, where if someone has rent due two days before payroll, or payday rather, um, they can't cover it, they might have to take out credit card debt, they might have to take out overdraft, they might have to um, even take out a payday loan. And so all of that would go away if people could get paid for the work they've done when they do it. And someone yesterday even joked to me, their kids get, you know, have a better payroll than they do because when they mow the lawn, they get paid. You know, whereas when you're an adult working in the professional fields, you work and then you have to wait 13 days to get paid. That doesn't make any sense. So flexible pay is the ability for employees getting paid through Gusto to choose their own pay schedule, irrespective of the employer debit cycle. So there's no effect to the employer cash flow. Um, what we're doing is basically enabling the employee to choose the schedule that's right for them. And that's really exciting. They can just choose you know, every Wednesday, done, and they're good to go. Or if they work three days and they have some need for capital, uh, maybe there's an urgent thing that pops up, they can actually pull out those funds. And because we're the payroll company, we know what their historical income was, we know what they were paid before, we know how many hours they've already worked, what they're, you know, what they're owed today if they were let go by this company. We know the solvency of the employer because we directly engage with their bank account. We know when this person's gonna get paid next and we're the one that's gonna pay them you know, in 11 days. It gives us a really unique set of data to actually approach that risk decision in a different way. And so we really think, again, once this is ubiquitous and widespread, no one really will ever go back. Kind of like when payroll used to be paper checks and you would have to go to the bank and deposit them. This idea of a two week pay cycle really should go away and be seen as a byproduct of the past. So CB Insights employees use Gusto. Yeah. When are they gonna be able to use it? Because you're just launching in Texas now and CB Insights is obviously based in New York, so when can we expect something like that to roll out here? So no date to announce. Um, we're starting it one step at a time. Uh, Texas is a big state, so that's why we started there. Um, but we do believe and want this to be uh, accessible to everyone on the Gusto platform. So no dates yet, uh, but we'll make sure you know as soon as it's live so you guys can personally benefit as well. Got it. Um, the other thing I want to ask is just, you know, Coinbase used to use Gusto and they outgrew it. There's a few other companies that I know that used to use it, loved it, and then they outgrew it as well. Is there ever a time where you could scale your technology to start working with larger businesses? Like me at Bloomberg, could I ever get paid through Gusto or is that just not a priority right now? Yeah, so for us fundamentally, the technology, the infrastructure we've created is ultimately very, very scalable. But we really want to be very focused on which customer matters most. And so for the next several years, at least, you know, we're just very, very focused on that one to 100 employee segment. It's a third of the workforce in the US. It's literally 98% of the companies in America are in that segment, one to 100. And it's a segment that's massively fragmented. So you do have big companies like ADP and Paychex. Together, you know, each have rather about 10% market share in terms of number of employers. We have 1%. Um, but pen and paper has you know, 40, 50%. And so we really think that segment that hasn't had access to great technology is getting fined, making mistakes. You know, it's our privilege to take five of the 20 hats off their head mm -hmm. and say, we will now help you. And because of our business model, we're a very inbound organic engine. Um, we really differentiate through ease of use and quality of experience. Our NPS is 70 plus, which is for us our due north on are we actually delivering value and helping you as a business And that's owner. like a customer satisfaction score, right? Yeah, so NPS yeah. is Net Promoter Score. It's a way to evaluate, um, would you recommend this product to someone else? And our biggest way of growing is through word of mouth and referrals. Got it. Well, Anand, you're not allowed to hire anybody else, at least for the next few years, because they want to keep using Gusto. Um, another question that I had, though, is it's, I don't know what it's like to market to small businesses and get them to use a product, but I would assume it's not very cheap. So how do you manage like getting that scale, getting more small businesses to hear about you? I know you mentioned word of mouth, but that can't be everything. Yeah, so with small business, um, truthfully, word of mouth 
and the organic piece is our biggest driver. We do some content programs. A lot of business owners haven't had access to great resources on how to navigate these uh, employee onboarding experiences or health insurance or payroll experiences, and we're happy to publish that content. It drives top of funnel for us, creates awareness, and those folks can ultimately convert and become customers. Um, we also have a program with accountants several thousand accountants across the country who used to do payroll themselves, never really wanted to, it was always a frustrating experience, it was never a really big profit driver, can now choose Gusto as their partner, and then those accountants add their clients to Gusto, and that's another way for us to grow. Got it, and what's the other benefit, just that they don't have to worry about payroll anymore, or is there some other benefits to that? For yeah, so a lot of these accountants really want to move into higher value add services, help their clients with things like cash flow management, budgeting, mm -hmm. forecasting. And so, you know, filling out the same form every quarter by hand, um, writing checks, pulling up tax tables is not really a good way to differentiate. That's all stuff, frankly, that should be done in software, and that's a big part of what we do, right? Government hasn't made any of this stuff very easy. You have uh, very complex documents, forms, requirements, filing issues, and our job, frankly, is to go take all that complexity, simplify it, and create an experience for the business owner um, that literally requires no training, no background whatsoever in running a business. Mm -hmm. And that's been a big part of our growth today. Got it. And how is, you know, the healthcare, the other, other benefits that you guys offer on your platform, how is that doing? Are a lot of employees enjoying it, liking it, signing up for that as well, outside of just using the payroll services? Yeah, so payroll is the core. It's where all the data sits. Mm -hmm. um, but we always believe things like health insurance, we're a broker for small group health insurance, really should not be done separately, right? It's a, it's a predefined plan, policy. We work with every insurance carrier across the country. You know, we're a broker. We just happen to have a few hundred engineers and designers and PMs on the team. And so um, it's been really successful um, because enrollment and onboarding is made easy because payroll is already um, a part of your experience and that data in payroll helps us with setting up your benefits. And so, yeah, we... Uh, are now in uh, covering about 84, 85% of our customers okay. in terms of coverage for health insurance um, as an accessible segment. Mm -hmm. And uh, our customers from an NPS standpoint, from a word of mouth standpoint, have really, really enjoyed the experience. Got it. Could you ever build an internal 401k offering rather than having to partner with, I, I forget which firm you partner with right now, but is that something you could build inside instead? Yeah, so we partner with a number of folks for 401k, HSA, FSA, commuter, workers' comp, life, disability. Mm -hmm. um, and frankly, most of our focus today and, and a big part of our energy and time is spent on doing payroll and health insurance really, really well. So those two systems we built homegrown, and it gives us a big advantage in offering it to the clients. For a lot of these other add-ons, um, we actually love working with partners today, so I have nothing to, to share on any future plans there. Got it. Um, and is the flexible pay, does that cost the employer anything extra to be able to offer that? Is that something that you're going to drive future revenue with, or is it just a great customer acquisition tool? So in the pilot, it'll be free, and we'll be exploring uh, potential pricing around it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, philosophy-wise, we really see this as just what payroll should be. Um, and so we already have a business model. Employers pay us for the service. It's a subscription. We already are a broker, so we get that uh, commission on the premiums. Mm -hmm. So we will be running this business more in the break-even category um, because we see so much value to the employee for them to get paid again, not for hypothetical work, but for work they've already done when they do it. And so we hope it becomes a standard. We're happy to be kind of leading the charge, but we think everyone ultimately should have flexible pay. Right, and I feel like there's a few other companies like uh, Visa had like a direct pay program for like an Uber driver if they work three days and want to get paid right away. You can get paid, like a gig economy worker could get paid yeah. for work much faster than say, I think me at Bloomberg, if we used Gusto, the quickest I could do is like a week at this point, correct? Um, so we, in terms of if you were using Gusto? Or? Yeah, if we were using Gusto, since I'm a salaried employee working yeah. all the time, a week is the shortest amount of time. Well, with flexible pay, I mean, you could theoretically choose to get paid every day if you want. Okay. Um, but yeah, we think ultimately, you know, not everyone's going to want to get paid every day. Mm -hmm. That feature is probably more if you have some urgent need for capital, you know, have not the need to go to credit card or do a payday loan. We can literally just pull the money against your existing earnings from our system. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we're excited to keep iterating, exploring what makes sense, and uh, we hope again it becomes the standard. Got it, and one thing I've found with any founder that I, I interview, you have to be extremely passionate about just what you're innovating on and what you're doing to actually make it work, because you, 
you're traveling a lot, you're working crazy hours. What makes you passionate every single day to just keep doing what Gusto is doing? Yeah, so we've talked about our goal is to spend many decades building Gusto. You know, I would do this job for free, frankly. It's, it's just fun to fix problems. And so our customers tell us every day, thank you, and are grateful. And we're fixing something that's very, very painful for them. You know, doing all the taxes, filings, all the you know, different documents by hand takes a lot of time, and we're honored to save them time and money. Um, but then also on the relationship side, you know, we really believe you know, our mission is to create a world where work empowers a better life. Mm -hmm. um, people spend a lot of time at work. It's a big part of where you derive, hopefully, fulfillment and impact. Um, but people make offers through Gusto. They set compensation through Gusto. They get paid and feel appreciated for their work, hopefully, through Gusto. And so, you know, I just love the opportunity to fix a problem that, you know, it impacts so many, so many people. It's going to take decades for us to go really reach our potential. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're just taking it one day at a time. Yeah. Does that mean IPO candidate in the future? Yeah, we will be an independent company indefinitely. Um, we've really structured the business, chosen investors with that philosophy in mind. Mm -hmm. So at some point, yes, we'll be a public company. No news to share there today. Um, we think it's we'll just talk a, backstage later. I don't want that. Yeah, we'll try anyways. to <laughs> cover. No, nothing there. We're <laughs> happily a private business today, but at some point it will make sense. The pros will outweigh the cons, and we'll celebrate that moment and then keep focusing back on the customer. You know, that really is who we're here to serve. Got it. All right. Over underrated time. Are you ready? I'm ready. Ready. All right. Um, ADP. <laughs> <laughs> um, no comment on competitor. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, shoes. Shoes. Uh, overrated. Overrated. Um, and you share an office with Uber. They're across the way. Uber, over underrated. Um, functionally useful and uh, culturally a work in progress. Gotcha, gotcha. And the, the autonomous car, though, they haven't done anything with it, right? It's, just, it's still just sitting there? Yeah, so our office is in, in San Francisco, is the office we're talking about. Um, their autonomous unit is right across from us, and they have a car that points towards the glass where our wall starts. And it's, we're not sure if it's on or off. We're not sure if it might just start going or not. So the people that in our office sit right there are a little bit wondering at times what's going to go on. But they've been friendly neighbors, and uh, I think Fundamentally, maybe a, a broader point, like technology can be used for good or bad. I think it's the responsibility mm -hmm. of the builders to think through that and take that responsibility seriously. Right. You know, we take our responsibility very seriously to make people get paid on time and set up insurance for their kids on time. And I think Silicon Valley, having grown up and been there my whole life, um, sometimes loses sight of that responsibility mm -hmm. and doesn't realize that you know, with great power comes great responsibility. You want to think through those implications. Yeah. It's not just growth. It's it's how you get that growth and being proud of it along the way. Mm -hmm. Scooters. Scooters. Uh, underrated. Really? You're pro scooter. Um, I, I would have guessed on. I would have guessed overrated on scooters. As long as they're not on the sidewalk. Oh, but let's see where they. That's where they all are. Well, then overrated. <laughs> You're the one that lives in San Francisco. I live here. I don't go out there that often. Um, the last one is Tesla. Over underrated. Uh, underrated, and mostly because I think anyone that has the audacity to believe in something big, enormous, huge, and then put everything they have against it, I will always admire. Um, I actually brought Elon to campus, or he was a speaker in a class I, I helped run when I was a student there, and he told me this joke once um, in that panel to the big classroom. He said, um, what is the fastest, best way to create a small fortune? And everyone tried to guess different answers, and he said, uh, start with a big fortune. And, <laughs> you know, logical, but if you think about what he's done, I don't know Elon at all personally, but that idea of taking risk and putting your own kind of um, skin in the game, at least, again, I don't know him personally, my sense is that he really believes in what he's doing, and I, I applaud that. It deserves some admiration. Well, thank you, Josh, and thank you, everyone. This, you know, concludes the panel. And yeah. Thank you.